Here's the thing with Final Fantasy. It lets you play however you darn want. Look at this guy. During the day, he's like, You Oh, but at night, he's like... There are many things to do in this game, but I am the best at all of them. But today, I will attempt my hardest challenge yet. I will talk to other people and meet every kind of Final Fantasy player. Oh look, it's our first subject. Look at him, just fucking standing there. This is a sprout. So fresh, so malleable. Oh, they are cute. They're dangerous. And who knows where they'll be a year from now. But sprouts are the lifeblood of this game. Players worship them like a sacred animal. And for what? Just because they are new? Despite the chaos that sprouts may bring, players believe that treating a sprout well is the only way for the game to grow. So you have to get sprouts hooked. Make it so they won't and can't leave. And then maybe they'll treat others well, and the wholesome circle of life will be complete. While you get to watch. Gather round. This is the best part of Sprouts. You can absorb the second-hand feeling of what it's like to be young again, when everything was new in those bygone days, before you became old and repulsive. But on the bright side, there is plenty of fresh meat to siphon. But perhaps I am being a bit harsh on Sprouts. I myself am new here. Yes, I have been a Sprout for 11 months. That's not a joke, that's real. <laughs> we Sprouts have a way of spreading joy. We are so full of overwhelming optimism, so enchanted by the new experience of running Praetorium. <laughs> Looking up to endgame players as if they're icons or deities. Wow, that's so cool. How do you get that armor? Wow, I hope I can be like that someday. Oh my god, he thinks my armor is cool! <laughs> and maybe that's why people like Sprout so much. Through a Sprout, one can see the world with a fresh, positive eye. Through a Sprout, one can relive their favorite moments. Or you could see their favorite character fucking die. <laughs> and after all, Sprouts need your help. Hey, have you done this before? No. Have you? No. But before you go rushing to help, be warned. There is a dark side to certain sprouts. Okay, listen, you have to watch this cutscene. Hey, hey, no, 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 wait, 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 no, 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 no. <laughs> I just love the story so much, and he's missing all of it. Oh, he may not care now, but he will. In Heaven's Ward. Wait, why do you even care so much? Most other games would neglect their stories, treating them as afterthoughts to the gameplay. But in Final Fantasy. 14. The story is the game. Notions of rushing to the end are gone. Content you would usually overlook now has purpose and value. There is so much optional side content that I usually wouldn't give a fuck about. But because of the story, my fucks are plentiful. But the story is more than just the words on a screen or the pages in a book. It's the world, the music, the friends you make along the way that all combine like a beautiful symphony. And that is the most important part, because what good is a story experienced alone? So this fucking thing is my best friend. Nanamo. 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 Me and Nanamo go way back. I just feel like she doesn't love me anymore, man. 
All right, Nanamo, you've had way too much to drink. Oh, warrior of light, where would I be without you? And where would I be without you, Nanamo? I vow to save every person, place, and thing in Eorzea. Warrior of light, <laughs> we, we need your help. Please, lend us your strength. Oh, Warrior of Light, you've returned. And who's this fellow you've brought along? Don't worry, Alphano. I've got this covered. Me and Alphano here have saved the world together. And over that time, we have not only grown as friends, but as individuals. We've laughed together, we've... We've cried together. And we've grown from brazen young adventurers into true heroes of the realm. And only in a game with a 600-hour story can you really feel that attached. Isn't that right, Alphano? Uh, this is Tataru. Pint, dude, it's been seven months since the last video. We're out of money! It's my creative process. You can't rush art. Okay, well, let me be frank. I've got the IRS on my ass, so can we at least tell the viewers this video is sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends? The IRS? Raid Shadow Legends. Oh, sure. I, I, what, like, what would I say, though? I don't know. Talk about how they could level up 600 unique champions. 600? Damn. Yep, one for every thousand I owe the government. I even have a personal assistant just to level up my favorite champion. Please, can I have a break? No! We need to get this done! They're on their way! <laughs> Classic Tataru. That sounds great, but can you give me like three reasons I should play a raid? Number one, you can play it anywhere, anytime. Even in the bathroom? Number two, the champions look great. Their outfits are so inspiring. Uh-huh. And three, it keeps my mind off things. Like what? Taxes, usually. And there's a crazy Halloween event going on right now, where you can win a bunch of in-game and real-life prizes, including a $1,000 Amazon gift card and legendary Halloween champions. Tataru Taru, this is the IRS. We need you to come outside, now. <laughs> I'll be right back. Wow, I can get all that by installing Raid and going to trickortreat.plarium.com? But only new players can win a prize. And if you haven't downloaded it yet, click the link in the description below. Or scan the QR code. And I'll get bonuses worth $30? We're talking 200k silver, an energy refill, an XP boost, one ancient shard, and a free epic champion, Vergus. And I'll find my rewards here. Wow. Hey, um, Pint, we gotta get out of here, man. Open the door, Tataru. Thank God, quick. End the ad. You're not going anywhere. No! Ad over. This is Kryl, and I would sacrifice every single one of you for her. She's great. Hold on, hold on. Wouldn't telling me about Kryl be a spoiler? But I like Kryl. Me? Spoil something? Oh, I regret to inform you that it gets even worse. There's a much more dangerous quality a character can have besides just being likable. Being sexy. When a sexy character is at play, people start losing their minds. They hold no regard for the spoilers that might come. Nothing is more dangerous than Graha Tears Belly Button. Or worse, Emmett Selk's feet. But don't think about such heinous things. This journey was made for you. You don't play as Cloud Strife or Jane Automata. You are Pepsi Crumpy Chat. A story, an experience, a world built for you to be at the center of it all. Um, so what happens when you've like finished the story? What? Finish the story? What's happening? No, 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 I'm not ready, this can't be it. I'm not ready, this can't be it. No. No, no, please. Please. This can't be it. I can't, please. I don't want to go. Damn. That sucks. Anyway. Attention! All you maggots are here today for one thing and one thing only. To raid! Melee, you're on Monk. And don't even think about playing Summoner. <laughs> you must be the new recruit. What are you from, Crystal? I bet you don't even have a purple class. What? Oh, you'll do great. All right, team. 
This is it. Tank stance. On. Healers, did you watch the guide? What? Ready. Charge. Six months. That's how long we've been here. We've lost many along the way. And we've faced countless whites. But that ends here. We, we did not concede. Rise, my wolves. Crimson is the field. Hardened our flesh. Stand for glory and fight for victory. Okay, Voke this. All right, and Feathering coming up. It's right on top of me, isn't it? Being in a raid of eight people means that it's not just about you. It's about us. It's about playing as a team, no matter how many times Haru Hisatsu from the Aether Data Center sits in a fucking mechanic to do 2% more damage! It's up to you to figure out how to make it work between you all. Which means your success is determined by how everyone else performs. So if you want to do well, you have to not only perform the best you can, but help others too. See Haru? You do much more damage when you're alive. Keeping your morale high is essential. Bossing people around or getting upset is going to do far more damage to your raid than Feather Mommy over here. It's our duty to smile and say, It is what it is. Go again. And that's the kind of raider you want to be. There's this stereotype that raiders can only be meanie weenies. But you are just here for your own ego. To think that you're better than the others. <laughs> you might be. But that gives you no right to be rude. I would never insult my white mage. For I have stood where he has stood. You don't raid to hear the roar of your team as the boss hits the floor. To see that achievement pop up on your screen. To take screenshots of you and your companions. That is why I raid. And it has absolutely nothing to do with my ego. That's right. I, Pint Frumpy Rat, have killed an ultimate. You will only address me as the ultimate legend from now on. I have the weapon, I have the title, but I have no purpose. At first, the reclears were nice. Then I started to care about my damage, and even that was fleeting. Day by day, everything becoming more mundane. I wish I could go back and just play. To have fun. Whoa! Yeah! Us role players are the slayest of all players. While most people are scared of social interaction, we do it daily for fun. You should come clubbing with us tonight. You could get some bitches, and then I think there's a catboy I hop down the road. Babes. You're like totally forgetting the fashion contest. Oh my god, this guy would win for sure. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Oh, no, he wouldn't win. Look at me. I'm radiant, immaculate, pristine. You are scum. People think role players are just casuals with extra steps. But some of us prefer to take it more seriously. Bitch, you stole my outfit. <laughs> So you play through the entire game just to stand there and show off your outfit. Uh-huh. And you find that... fun? Yeah, look, I get it. It looks kind of weird to an outsider. But we're just hanging out, you know, making friends, socializing. It's not like we're all perverts or anything. That's just Barry. Barry fucks. There's parties which are way better than real life because if the music's too loud and you're kind of drunk, you can just teleport out instead of your friends begging you not to drive again. <laughs> and casinos where instead of losing all of your money, you lose all of your money. There's even entire theater shows. Heck, there's a yearly in-game convention hosted by players. This community is good. Uh-huh. And what community do those guys have? Uh, look at these cat girls. They're taking pictures right now. I wonder what kind of pictures they're taking. Wait, what is the carbuncle for? So it's just clothes. That's your end game. Well, that's definitely part of it, but there's other things like AFKing or housing. 
I built this kitchen all by myself. It only took me three weeks and it wasn't that expensive. Where did all of our money go? Here's a fun fact. This drawer is actually 16 cups, just kind of fucking wedged together. If our friends need something, I rest well knowing I can make it. A made cafe, a theater. I even made a fucking Denny's. I love picking up new hobbies. I've been getting really into crafting, and I know that sounds mundane, but it's actually really rewarding, and it's something new. Goodbye, Moogles. See you tomorrow. I fucking hate those guys, holy shit. But if there's one thing that truly holds my passion, it's fashion. It's my creative outlet. I venture into all kinds of content just for the glamour I want. It gives me a reason to try everything. Oh, looks like I need a PvP for this one. Ugh, what a waste of time. Don't knock it till you've tried it. Here, what do you think? Uh, well, do you like it? Hmm. I do look pretty fly in red. Fuck it. Let's party. You know what? You people are alright. Well, I'm glad you warmed up to us. Everyone has their own way of living, I guess. You look at things from a singular perspective. It limits your experiences. Things have become rather stale. But this has been a breath of fresh air. Trying something you don't know you'll enjoy is a bit of a risk. It can be scary or even feel unnecessary. But that uncertainty is dramatic and fun. And I think that's the thing. There are so many different ways to play this game, and it gives you so many opportunities to try new shit. It actively encourages you to go out and do things you haven't done, just for the joy of the experience. But it's not just that. I've met so many different kinds of people. They've shown me things I didn't even know existed. I've grown close to them and learned to enjoy things that they enjoy. Experiences I'd have never had if I didn't take that step out from the norm and see what the world has to offer. It matures you, not just in terms of gameplay variety, but as a person. And for that, I thank you all for showing me so much. What's up, my grimbly bimblies? I'm going to be playing Endwalker on Twitch, so follow me there. Also, the next video is not going to take seven months. It's going to take eight.